الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام الرس اللہ وعلیٰ علی وصاب اجمعین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان المسلمین والمسلماتی والمؤمنین والمؤمناتی والقانتین والقانتاتی والصادقین والصادقاتی والصابرین والصابراتی والخوشین والخوشیاتی والمتصدقین والمتصدقاتی والصائمین والصائماتی والحافظین فروج والحافظاتی والذاکرین اللہ قصیر و ذاکراتی اعد اللہ اللہ مقفرت اجن عظیمہ رب شہلی صدری و یسلی عمری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ کولی دونربل گیسٹ آف آنر میری فکر ایلڈرز اینڈ میری ڈیبل اینڈ سسٹرز آئی ویلکم آل آف یو ود اسلامک گریٹنگز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ میں پیس مرسی اینڈ بلیسنگز آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ آف آل مائی ٹی گاڈ بی آن آل آف یو دا ٹاپک آف دس ایوننگ اسٹاک از وومنز رائٹس ان اسلام پروٹیکٹڈ اور سبجیکیٹڈ وومنز رائٹس اکاؤنٹ ٹو آکسفرڈ ڈکشنری آ دوز رائٹس دیٹ پروموٹ a position of social and legal equality of women with men. Women's rights, according to our tradition, means rights that promote a position of social and legal equality of women with men. I'm not too much concerned about the conclusions, the modern ideas, and the categorical statements made by scientists and unexperienced armchair experts as how a life should be led by a woman. I'm going to base my conclusions on experience which has been proven by facts because experience and holistic truth is the sure test between the gold of truth and the glitter of theory. We have to check our intellect because many a time our mind can go astray. Indeed, there was a time when the great minds of that day, they thought that the world was flat. If we agree with how the Western media portrays the women's rights in Islam, we have no option but to agree that the women's rights in Islam, they are subjugated and they are not protected. The Western talk of women's liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of a body, of deprivation of honor and degradation of a soul. The Western society claiming to uplift the woman have actually degraded her to a status of concubines, mistresses, and society butterflies, which are employed as mere tools in the hands of sex marketers and pleasure seekers, which are hidden behind the colorful screen of art and culture. Islam gave women their due rights 1400 years ago. In the Yawm al Jahiliya, it was known as the days of ignorance. Islam gave women the due rights. If we go back into history and analyze, when we read the history of Babylonian civilization, at that time, if a man committed murder, instead of him being punished, his wife was put to death. When we read the history of the Greek civilization, they had a mythological person by the name of Pandora, who was a woman, who was the cause of evil and misfortune in society. In the Greek civilization, the women were used for sex and pleasure. When we read the history of Roman civilization, 
when the Roman civilization reached its peak, a man was permitted to even kill his wife. Women were used for sex and pleasure. Nudity and promiscuity was common. When we read the history of the Egyptian civilization, they considered the woman as a sign of the devil. When we read the Arab civilization before the Quran was revealed, very often when a female child was born, she was buried alive. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. After the revelation of the Quran and after the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last and final messenger of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the woman got the due rights. It uplifted the status of the woman. Imagine in the days of ignorance, it was known as Yomil Jahiliya. The Arabs were the most ignorant people of that time. And after the revelation of the Quran, the woman, they got the due rights. Before we discuss the women's rights in Islam, I would like to point a few things. Muslims today, approximately, they constitute 20 to 25 percent of the world population. One fifth to one fourth of the world population today are Muslims. Some Muslim societies, they're close to Islam, while the others, they are far away from Islam. If anyone wants to judge the women's rights in Islam, he should not judge according to what Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. The women's rights in Islam should be based on the authentic sources of Islam. The authentic sources of Islam are the glorious Quran, the last and final revelation of Almighty God, and the authentic hadith of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So women's rights in Islam should only be judged and based on the authentic sources of Islam, the glorious Quran, and the authentic sayings of the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quranic verses will never contradict among themselves. Neither would the Sahih Hadith. The Quran and the Sahih Hadith, they in conformity. They will never contradict themselves. Yet we find that there are Muslim scholars, they have difference of opinion in many aspects of the women. The main reason is that these scholars, they quote one particular verse of the Quran and neglect all the other verses of the Quran. The Quran should be read as a whole. And if we read the Quran as a whole, most of these differences will be solved. It's the duty of every true Muslim, whether man or woman, to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. The main aim should not be to get famous or to satisfy one's own ego. The main aim of every Muslim, whether man or woman, is to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Men and women in Islam, they are equal. But equality does not mean identicality. They're equal, but they are not identical. Depending upon the biological makeup of the man and woman, there are differences. Depending upon the biological makeup of the man and woman, depending upon the physiological makeup, depending upon the psychological makeup, depending upon the physical makeup, Almighty God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given different roles for men and women. Many a time, they're exactly the same, they're identical. And sometimes they differ depending upon the biological background, the physiological background, the psychological background, the physical background. He's our creator. He knows what is best for us. I have divided my talk, the women's rights in Islam, into six broad headings. The spiritual rights of the women in Islam, the economic rights of the women in Islam, the social rights of the women in Islam, the educational rights of the women in Islam, the legal rights of the women in Islam, 
and the political rights of the women in Islam. 